found it. I can't believe it. Well, this is an emotional moment for me. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to birds. And I don't mean the British slang phrase birds to mean women, I mean actual birds with wings. And right now it is spring if you haven't noticed, and there's some similarities between spring in Britain and spring in the United States. Yesterday we had a little bit of drizzle here in Illinois, which is very similar to Britain at this time of year, and all times of year. Anyway, I forgot to say this in my last video, if you're not yet subscribed to Lost in the Pond, do that now. But there are some differences, and one of those differences are the types of birds that seem to populate the area. Remember last year when those morning doves decided to live on my window ledge without paying any additional rent? Birdie just looking for worms. He isn't going to find worms on the windowsill. Oh, you scared him! Remember all of my references to cardinals. But there's one other bird with which I've become particularly familiar since moving into my first American house, and that bird is the robin. And I know what my British viewers are thinking. Ooh, Lawrence, we have robins in Britain. What are you talking about? And that is correct. We do have robins in Britain. Indeed, our robins are synonymous with Christmas cards. And do you know why that is? It's because back in the Victorian age, our postmen were referred to as robins. And so it just transpired that during that time period, they just started sticking robins, the bird, onto Christmas cards. All that said, the robins that I encountered in Britain are not the same as those that I've discovered in my American backyard. But more on that in a bit. But the fact that they and grey squirrels and magnolia leaves frequent my backyard and I thought it'd be useful to do this video in what is known in American circles as a mudroom but that I've come to know as nature's cinema. And the good thing is, the entry is free, you know, unless you count the mortgage, which is sizable. But the floor is not absolutely covered in popcorn or piss. And one thing I've learned from sitting at this window day after day is that American robins are not just in my yarden, they're in that yarden, they're in that yarden, they're in that y they're in every yard, they're everywhere. American robins are among the most abundant bird species in North America with an estimated 380 million residing there. That's more than the combined populations of the United States, Canada and my house. But don't worry, they're not all crammed into Illinois because that would spell the end of Illinoisan society. No, in fact, American robins can be found in all states not named Hawaii. Just like raccoons, they were once merely forest dwellers, but as human sprawl took on a life of its own, these adorable little f migrated to America's backyards. Again, just like raccoons. Thanks, microphone, Lawrence. Thankfully, raccoons haven't plagued us like squirrels have. But there is one four-legged creature who likes to hang out in the backyard, and that four-legged creature is Arthur, my puppy. And I don't know what it is about him, but he just really likes to chase birds. That's every, that's every dog, right. And thankfully, he hasn't done that thing yet where he brings us a gift unless you include my microphone, which now needs replacing. But when we're in the backyard or just walking down the street, he could be as placid as anything, just walking along when all of a sudden he darts and pulls me into oblivion. That's when you know that he's spotted a member of the animal kingdom. And invariably round here, that member of the animal kingdom is the American Robin. Leave the bird alone. What's it done to you? Come on. And they just fly away, no gratitude, like, ooh, Lawrence, thank you for putting your dog on a leash so that I don't have to die today. But just like with cardinals, which for my non-American viewers are all over red, American robins are a thing of beauty. Because of their migration patterns, not all Americans experience an abundance of them at the exact same time. Back to you, microphone Lawrence. Just as I do when I lock myself in the basement during a blizzard, many American robins head south for the winter. But in their case, their migration has little to do with the weather, indeed, due to their fluffy plumage. American robins are somehow absolutely okay with Chicago winters, to the extent that you sometimes see them milling about in leafless trees. The reason they head south is because food sources such as worms deplete in the winter, while Florida has worms all year round, and that wasn't my attempt at social commentary. On extremely rare occasions, maverick American robins have even been known to migrate all the way to Western Europe, with the majority ending up in Britain, and when I say majority, we're talking like three a year, so, you know, less than the population of my house. You know, I spend a lot of time on this channel talking about the differences between Britain and America in the context of the human race. But I think it's sometimes important to acknowledge the other life forms and how they differ from one side of the pond to the other. After all, we spend our entire life surrounded by them, and they spend their entire life surrounded by us. Except their lives are much shorter than ours. I think I read that robins on average live for about two years. That seems unfair. 
So it's important for me to do videos about these kinds of things so that I can raise their profile and make them feel more confident inside. It doesn't really work like that, does it? I don't think Robins watch my YouTube channel, but if you do, Robins, just know that you are loved by everybody in my family, except my cat and my dog, obviously. Perhaps less widely discussed is how American Robins got their name. They were named thus by early English settlers who remarked upon their similarity to a bird back in their homeland, and that bird was the European Robin. At first, the similarity was there for all to see, with both birds sporting a red chest similar to that of an Englishman abroad. Ironic. But upon closer inspection, it becomes clear that these settlers didn't have a clue how to Google stuff. If they did, they'd have seen that European Robins, like me after a fortnight in Orlando, also boast red faces. Their American counterparts do not. Additionally, American Robins have yellow beaks similar to blackbirds, whereas Euro Robins just don't. But the biggest reason that colonists might have kicked themselves for not consulting Wikipedia is this. The two birds are not related at all. That's right, American robins belong to the thrush family, hence my reference to blackbirds, whereas those from Europe hail from the old world family of flycatcher, which sounds like a Pixar villain but isn't. And so as I sit here in nature's cinema, it has occurred to me as we approach the end of this video that I haven't yet turned the camera around to show you what I'm seeing. And the reason that I haven't done that is, weirdly, the robins haven't shown up today, which sort of undermines my video a little bit. Oh, there's one on the garage roof. No, it's been chased off by a squirrel. Too late. Can we just sit here all day with a camera until we see one? And then we'll just squeeze it into the end of the video to have that pleasing resolution. You have to get off early? What do you mean you have to get off early? We've got a video to make. So I'm using the expensive lens, and I think I'm just gonna have to sit here and whisper like David Attenborough, which, is that what he does when he goes off into the forest with all the gorillas? Not seeing anything so far, but I suppose that's no surprise. Because these robins, I think they do know that I have a YouTube channel, and they've decided to troll me by not coming out when I need them most. I tell you, nature is just hard. There's one. There's one. Yes! We found it. We found it. I can't believe it. Well, this is an emotional moment for me, because while well, I've seen these a hundred times in my backyard, you haven't. Gonna get a worm? Are you gonna find a worm? What are you gonna do, mate? You wanna come over here? We'll share stories. Stories of our adventures across the Atlantic. Maybe you're one of the three birds a year that ends up in Britain. You've only got about two years to achieve that, so I hope you can. He's a big bugger, isn't he? Which is probably a good thing, because that means he's eating all of the worms in my garden. Like there. Is that a worm or a stick? Do birds get confused, like when they see twigs? Does that look like there's a worm in it? I think this one's my new best friend. Let me know in the comments what we should call him or her. Part of me believes that he or she is oblivious to my existence, and the other part believes that he or she is very aware that it's being watched by hundreds of thousands of people. Would you like a pineapple? I've heard they eat fruit if you leave it on your bird feeder. That's what a patron told me the other day. By the way, if you like what we do here and you want to support us, you could become a patron at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Absolutely delightful. All right, goodbye.